force and pressure force the push or pull on an object is called force it is something which changes or tends to change the state of rest or of motion of a body it can also change the shape of the body thus we can define force in simple terms as force is a pull or push acting on a body which tends to change its state of rest or of motion the state of motion of an object is described by its speed and direction of motion when the speed of the body is zero it is considered to be in a state of rest force is actually denoted by letter f the strength of a force is usually experienced by its magnitude the si unit for force is newton denoted by n the direction in which the body is pushed or pulled is called the direction of force forces due to interaction sit on a bicycle and wait for it to move on its own no it will not move till you apply force on its pedals and with your feet some way the door of your cupboard will not open unless you apply force on it to pull it with your hand in the first situation interaction between your feet and the pedals makes the bicycle move in the second situation interaction between the handle and your hand makes the door open now we can say that an interaction between two objects is necessary for force to be effective and there is a push or a pull involved when force is applied thus two objects must interact with each other for a force to come into play exploring forces in the game of tug of war two teams pull at a rope in opposite direction members of both the teams try to pull the rope in their direction if the two teams apply the same force the rope will not move at all but the rope will move in the direction of the team that applies more force thus the team that pulls harder that is applies a larger force finally wins the game when forces are applied on an object in the same direction the net or resultant force is the sum of all the forces applied when two forces are applied in opposite directions the net or resultant force is the difference of the two forces for example when two people push the table in the same direction it will move faster than when only one person pushes it and the resultant force on the table is the sum of the forces applied by both the people when two people start pushing the table in the opposite directions the table will either not move at all or move slightly in the direction of the person who applies more force this proves that if the two forces act less in the opposite direction on an object the net force acting on it is the difference between the two forces force can make an object move force can stop a moving body force can change the direction of a body force can increase or decrease the speed of a moving body force can change the shape and size of a body the effects of force in detail are force can produce motion force can be applied on an object by pushing pulling or hitting it with another object this applied force can make the object move for example you can push a small box to move it ahead you can pull a car door to open it you can hit a ball with a bat to move the ball the objects will move in the same direction as the force however it is not necessary that the applied force will always produce motion if you try to push pull or hit a tree or a wall to make them move the tree or the wall will not move because the force applied by you is not sufficient to move them hence you can conclude that force can produce motion but it is not always necessary force can stop motion to stop a moving body apply force on it in the direction opposite to the direction of its motion for example force applied to stop a moving ball or a rolling stone however if the stone is too bulky we may not be able to stop it as the force applied by us is not sufficient force can change the direction of motion in a game of cricket football hockey tennis etc we can change the direction of the motion of the ball by hitting it however if the direction of the force applied is the same as the direction of the motion of the object the direction of the object will not change but its speed will increase 
force can change the speed of motion. When a force is applied on a moving body, in the direction of the motion of the body, the body begins to move faster. But if the force is applied on a moving body in a direction opposite to the direction of motion of the body, then the body slows down. For example, when a player kicks a moving football in the direction of its motion, speed of the football increases and it starts moving faster. On the other hand, a goalkeeper applies force in the opposite direction to which the football is moving to stop the football and reduce its speed to zero. Force can change the shape and size of an object. Take a candy floss. Hold it in your hand and apply force. You will observe that its shape and size change. Similarly, we can change the shape and size of a spring, rubber band, dough, sponge and many other things by applying force in them. Types of Forces For force to be effective, the two objects must interact with each other physically or otherwise. Based on this, forces may be categorized as contact or non-contact forces. Contact Forces These forces in which the two interacting objects are in physical contact with each other are called contact forces. The contact can also be with the connectors like a stick, a piece of rope, etc. The various kinds of contact forces are muscular force and frictional force. Muscular force. The force exerted by the muscles of our body is termed as muscular force. Construction workers use muscular force when they carry bricks or cement. Bullocks pull carts and plough fields using muscular force. Frictional force. The force that opposes the motion of an object is called frictional force. It slows things down or prevents them from moving by acting in a direction opposite to the motion of the moving object. Friction is a contact force as it arises due to contact between surfaces. A ball rolling along the ground gradually slows down and finally comes to rest. A car or a scooter also comes to rest once the engine is stopped. The wear and tear of the moving parts of a machine is also because of force of friction. We are able to walk properly on rough surfaces because of the friction provided by the surface. It is very difficult to walk on a smooth surface or wet road because the smoothness or wetness reduces the frictional force. Non-contact forces Those forces which act on objects without being touched visibly are called non-contact forces. Mechanical force the force produced by a machine is called mechanical force. It works only with the help of energy supplied by external sources like electricity, petrol, diesel, etc. The engine of a vehicle runs with the help of fuel and makes the car move. Magnetic force. The force exerted by a magnet is called magnetic force. A magnet can exert force on another magnet and on other metals like iron, nickel, steel and without being in contact with them. Hence, it is an example of non-contact force. The like poles of a magnet repel each other and the unlike poles attract each other. This attraction or repulsion can be compared as a form of pull and push. Electrostatic force The force exerted by a charged body on another charged or uncharged body is known as electrostatic force. Charges can attract or repel each other like magnets. When we rub a comb or scale on dry hair, it gets charged. Tiny pieces of paper get attracted to it due to the electrostatic force exerted by the comb or scale without touching the pieces of paper. Gravitational force. Gravitational force is the force with which any two masses or objects pull each other. We can only feel it when an object trying to pull us has a significant mass. For example, we can feel the gravitational force of the earth because it is very big, whereas we cannot feel the pull exerted by a chair because its mass is insufficient to apply enough gravitational force. Thus, for gravitational force to be obvious between two objects, the mass of at least one of the objects 
must be large enough. Gravity is the gravitational force with which the earth attracts objects towards itself. It acts on all objects. For example, a ball thrown upwards always comes down. Water begins to flow downwards as soon as we open a tap. A ripe fruit from a tree falls down. When you jump up, you come down, etc. Pressure When we move on sand, our feet sink into it and it is difficult for us to walk. On the other hand, a camel which is much heavier than us can walk on sand easily. This is because camel has broad feet. It is easy to cut fruit and vegetables with a sharp knife than with a blunt one. This happens because a blunt knife has a larger area of contact. We can conclude that the effect of force depends upon the area of contact of the two objects. Less of the area of contact, more is the effect of force and vice versa. That is why it is easy to push a sharpened pencil into the soil as the area which the force is applied is small and that increases the effect of force on the pencil. We can observe the relationship between pressure and area in many day-to-day -day activities. The width of straps of bags and suitcases is increased to reduce pressure while carrying them. The wheels of a military tranker are covered with a broad rubber strip so that they do not sink in the sand or snow. It is more comfortable to wear broad heels while walking on soft surfaces. Elephants and bears have broad feet to help them walk on soft surfaces without falling. We can measure the effect of force using a physical quantity called pressure. Pressure is defined as the force acting on a unit area of a service. The SI unit of pressure is Pascal. It is named after Blaise Pascal who investigated air pressure. Thus, 1 Pascal is the pressure applied when force of 1 Newton acts on the area of 1 meter square. Pressure exerted by liquids. Solids have a definite shape. The pressure exerted by solids depends on the contact area. However, liquids do not have a definite shape. The pressure exerted by them depends upon the depth of the water column. They exert pressure not only at the base of the container but also on its sides. It is clear that the pressure of a liquid keeps increasing with the depth. That is why deep sea divers wear special suits to protect themselves from the increasing water pressure. When we try to push an inverted glass in a bucket full of water, the glass resists being pushed down the water. This happens because the force exerted by water on the glass is much more than the force exerted by you. Thus, the upward force of water resists the downward movement of the glass. So we can say that pressure at any point under a liquid is because of the weight of the liquid column above that point. You must have observed that a feather floats on water while a stone sinks in it. This happens because whenever an object is immersed in a liquid, it experiences a net upward force by the liquid. This upward force decides whether an object will sink or float in the liquid. If the weight of the object is less than the upward force, then the object will float, otherwise it will sink. Atmospheric Pressure Just like liquids, gases also exert pressure. That is why a balloon expands when we blow air in it. But we blow too much air in a balloon, it bursts. This happens because the material of the balloon is not able to withstand the increasing pressure of air. This shows that air exerts pressure. Our earth is surrounded by a layer of air called the atmosphere. This atmosphere exerts pressure on all objects. The pressure exerted by the weight of the air on an object is called atmospheric pressure. The air in the atmosphere reaches up to a height of nearly 300 kilometers, exerting a lot of pressure on the earth. But why we do not get crushed under this weight? The reason is that the pressure exerted by our body is equal to the pressure exerted by the atmosphere on our body. This nullifies the effect of atmospheric pressure. 
atmospheric pressure decreases with altitude. The height of a place above the sea level is known as altitude. Atmospheric pressure at a place is the force exerted by the weight of the air column above that place. The height and weight of the air column decreases as we go up. Therefore, the atmospheric pressure also reduces as we go to higher places. Hence, the atmospheric pressure at a place depends on its altitude. Effects of atmospheric pressure The atmospheric pressure is maximum at sea level. As we go to higher altitudes, it decreases. This decrease in atmospheric pressure affects us as as we go higher up on mountains, we find that our ears pop and we need to breathe in more often than we breathe at lower altitudes. This happens because the air pressure around our ears decreases. This causes an imbalance between the pressure inside and outside our ears leading to popping of the ears. Astronauts wear special pressurized suits as there is no air and atmospheric pressure in space. These suits prevent their blood vessels from bursting. The imbalance between the pressure of blood and other fluids inside the body and lack of pressure outside would otherwise make the blood vessels burst. Mountaineers often encounter problems like nose bleeding when they reach high altitudes. This happens because the pressure exerted by the blood in their body becomes much higher than the pressure outside making the blood vessels burst.